What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. So iOS 18.3 Beta 1 has now been out for a little over a week and a half. And as we anticipated, we will not be getting a new beta in the form of iOS 18.3 Beta 2 until after the new year. So having said that, if you did decide to take that plunge and opt into putting iOS 18.3 betas on your device, let's talk about how battery life and performance has been. All right, so if you guys decided to wait and not jump on the bandwagon for iOS 18.3 Beta 1, you were probably smarter than most, definitely smarter than us, because as you would expect, it has not been the most stable build, although I will say iOS 18.3 Beta 1 was actually not too terrible in the sense of performance, although battery life, due to some rogue apps not being optimized yet, have been an issue. We have had some significant battery drain over the course of the last two weeks or so, and we found that being attributed really to some rogue apps, HP print for some reason was definitely a substantial issue here. But aside from that, it hasn't been horrible. If you did want to take the plunge, I can say it will not be rebooting. Springboard has been doing decently. And one good thing here is now running a few betas of iOS 18.1, 0.2 and now 0.3 as you can see here our battery health is still at a hundred percent capacity which is good to see especially after a hundred and three cycle counts now one thing and if you follow the channel you guys would be very well aware apple intelligence is still in beta and still causing issues for us especially when it comes to the device's heating and if you guys are experiencing the same thing after running genmoji or Image Playground, comment down below because anytime we really go to generate any sort of new images, we'll just go through anything here, the phone gets ridiculously warm. We've talked about these in our other beta videos and other review videos itself, but the phone itself in beta one for iOS 18.3 still has the same issues and the phone does get ridiculously warm, unfortunately. Now, if you are jumping around and just doing normal day-to-day -day tasks, again, going into our uh, stock app here, it works pretty smoothly. It has not been terrible by any means, but after running through and jumping around and going through an assortment of different apps, I can tell you the phone is definitely getting warm and we are not getting through a full day without a charge. So. Keep in mind, depending on how heavy your notifications are and how heavy everything else works for you in your day-to-day -day routine from messages and phone calls, uh, it could be detrimental to your battery life where you will need to replug and charge your phone multiple times in a day. Now, I will also say though, having said all of these things, it has been somewhat stable, like I said earlier, but keep in mind, battery has been its most pressing point. And like I explained earlier here, as you can see, HP Smart is really what was destroying our battery earlier. Uh, Twitter or X, whatever you'd like to call it, also had a bearing on that just because apps are not yet optimized for iOS 18.3. Kind of scrolling around and jumping through notes and just going through anything else, day to day, it's been okay. But just keep these couple of things in mind as well. If you are going to be using AI features, writing tools, any of that, Genmoji, Image Playground, it has significantly hurt battery life. So the bigger and better question that we need to ask is when exactly can we anticipate getting beta two? Since we are obviously in the middle of the holidays, we're a day after Christmas, we can really go ahead and skip past December here because also next week is New Year's Eve and usually Apple, Apple lets developers have these couple of weeks off or they're not intermittently developing and obviously deploying new betas or updates. So we can really truly go ahead and skip into January here because we are realistically looking at January 6th as the next update for the next beta cycle. Usually we'll see watchOS and iOS released at the same time. It has been kind of hit and miss recently, but January 6th should be the next date to assume we will receive beta two. With beta two, hopefully we will see some new features, battery life improvements, and stability improvements as well. 
What's really surprising is in beta one, we did not get any new Apple intelligence features. We know we're still waiting on some for Siri knowing better screen context and other items, but that's not here necessarily for the full rollout. Nothing new AI wise in beta one. So hopefully with beta two, we will get some more information and see some new items getting deployed here, uh, but we'll just truly have to wait and see. One other thing, not specifically relevant to iOS 18.3, but very cool. If you are a T-Mobile customer, Starlink direct to sell should be going live. There is a beta sign up. If you guys were interested, go check out tmobile.com for that SpaceX direct to sell a beta program that you can currently sign up for. That is a very cool feature that is in the news within the last couple weeks. Give that a check if it's something you'd like to see. No new hardware or software is required for that. It is truly just a, almost like an over the air update in order to receive that extra coverage. It's only gonna be for sending messages um, currently, but it should be very interesting to see how it is gonna work once we actually get that on our T-Mobile phones. But that's it for this one, guys. Not a lot of new information here. I just wanted to let you know how beta one has been and what you can anticipate going forward for the next beta release. Let us know in the comments down below, like I said, how has beta one been on your device if you actually updated to 18.3? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.